autoerotic asphyxiation than you are to die from a terror attack, whether that's a, uh, a terror attack committed by, uh, by Islamic terrorists or a terror attack committed by, what the, how they phrase it, homegrown terrorists. Doesn't matter. You are statistically more likely to die from autoerotic asphyxiation than to die from a terror attack. You are statistically more likely to drown in your own bathtub than you are to die in a terror You are statistically more likely to die from falling out of your bed than you are to die from a terror attack. Or Everybody needs shooting. to cool the jets. You're calling them all together? What's that? You're calling them, uh, you're, are you including the mass shootings in that terror attack? Well, I would definitely say that this is an act of, this is an act, I mean, oh, yeah. anything. Yeah, absolutely, it's an act of terror. terror. This so, is an act of terror. No know, matter I mean, what this guy's motivation was, this was uh, an act of terror. And I want to recap real quick because I just started recording. So if you're watching on YouTube, you missed a bunch of stuff. So I encourage you to go to the Liberty Principle Facebook page, but, uh, and, and catch the beginning of the show the the we're talking about the the florida parkland shooting and uh the guy goes in uh kid uh, goes to the school 2 40 p.m with an ar-15 he starts shooting outside now i don't know if he triggered a fire alarm before or after but at some point it appears that he triggered a fire alarm to get a bunch of people uh in a close area so he can open fire he was loose for about an hour, a little bit over an hour. From 2.40 p.m., the shooting began. A little bit after 4, he was caught. He was caught without incident. It appears the guy really was trying to get away. It doesn't appear that he was on any kind of suicide mission. And as you can expect, there was nobody armed inside. So the people, because they were totally defenseless, it's a gun-free zone. I don't know if it was officially designated a gun-free zone or not. But in essence, it was a gun-free zone. Nobody had a gun. Everybody was reduced to huddling under their desks and begging for their lives. Nobody had any means of self-defense against this kid. And then Senator uh, Chris Murphy goes before the Senate. Uh, Senator Chris Murphy, uh, Murphy of Connecticut goes before the Senate and blames the Senate and says that the uh, shooting is as a consequence of our inaction. In other words, it's his fault because he hasn't done enough to try to take your guns away from you. And then basically, the problem, the, go ahead, go ahead. Go I'm ahead. sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, ba basically what we have right now, I mean, is uh, Democrats blaming Republicans. Uh, as far as as far as legisla legislators and legislation is concerned, you have Democrats blaming blaming Republicans, and uh, you, you know as far as uh, as far as you know everyday ordinary people, the race is on right now to pin this on the opposition. Oh, that's uh, the other are, element to this, as usual. Right. Uh, everybody there, uh, wants. Go ahead. Every, everybody wants to pin it on the other guy. I mean. And, and and you have news on that front, seen, right? You've been looking into uh, that, right? I've and, seen I've now, seen people, I've seen yeah, people on you, the right uh, saying this stuff about uh, you know oh he's an Antifa member and they're drumming up uh, pi uh, pictures whether or not this is uh, 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 authentically uh, Nicholas De Jesus Cruz or not. Nobody knows. They're just putting these pictures up there and uh, you know saying oh he's a member of Antifa, he's a registered Democrat. You've got. Uh, left wing, uh, 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 you know, people on social media posting all this stuff about, well, he had anti Muslim slurs all over his Instagram page. So he's a right winger. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely absurd. Everyone is trying to put the responsibility for this on every and anyone except the person who's actually responsible for it, which is Nicholas de Jesus Cruz. If you want to hear something that's going to infuriate you more than anything, are you ready for this, Paul? Because this, yes. I think, it might get you fired up as well. Uh, according, according to some teachers that were at this school, he demonstrated warning signs. One student right. uh, told WJXT that everyone predicted this shooting, which killed multiple people, uh, saying, quote, honestly, a lot of people were saying that it was going to be him. Uh, the, the student told the news station that uh, kids joked around that the student would be the one to shoot up the school. Yes, I uh, saw this. Yes. It turns out everyone predicted it. 
Um, everyone predicted it. Uh, another student said. Uh, uh, then it goes on here for uh, another student told uh, WSVN that the suspect is a troubled kid who always had a certain amount of issues going on. Jim Gard, who said that he was Cruz's teacher around August to September of 2016, told Fox News that he wasn't shocked to hear that his former student's name was circling around as the suspect in this shooting. Quote, it hit me like, wow, am I shocked? No, I hate to say it. Nothing shocking anymore, and that's horrible. Well, if these authorities had the inkling that this dude was going to go and blast everybody, why didn't they do something? Why didn't they bring it to the attention? Why wasn't someone watching this kid to make sure that this wasn't going to – if everyone thought that he was going to do this, where was it? literally – Everyone. Where were his classmates? Where were his teachers? Where was the rest of the administration at the school? Where were his parents? Where was everyone who is supposed to be watching what this what these kids are doing? Where were they? Why didn't someone, anyone, speak up and say, hey, you know what? Maybe this is a kid that we should kind of keep an eye on because if somebody's going to do something like this, probably going to be him. Probably. I, I have a comment. I got a couple comments here, and actually, I think I've already addressed your comments, but I'll I'll bring them up anyway. One of them is from uh, Andrew Marich Bodhi Agora, who's our the co-host on the Tuesday Is Daily Show, and he says, unless they're trained for such an event, I highly doubt someone else with a gun would be effective. The most common means of taking out a shooter immediately. Is someone tackling them? No, no, that's not the most common means of taking a shooter out unless you're in a situation which nobody has a gun. When somebody has a gun, they're they're gonna go, they're gonna they're gonna choose their gun. Now, if you're talking about a situation we're also not talking about a trained mercenary here, okay? Yeah, we're this also not talking not about trained, trained mercenaries. Oh, However, I, the I, I I actually did address this and I did say uh, I uh, when I talked about they're not like if if you have a handgun and you're going up against an AR you're at a huge disadvantage. So one person with a handgun you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Even if you have a handgun you're still in trouble. So if it's just one person with a handgun, well it's still it's better than having no person with a handgun. But still, it's it's you're 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 in you're in it. But at the very least, what a person with handgun could could at least uh, do is distract the kid enough, get his focus on him, and uh, a lot more people could escape them. And so, so I actually did kind of address that. But I do want to say, Bodie, no, no. The most effective way to take out a shooter is not to tackle them, un unless that's all you can do. If you have a gun, the first and foremost choice is to immediately now if you're in a drop if he has you in the drop down yes you're right then you go for the tackle you bob weave do whatever you can because you're not going to be able to get your gun out before he shoots you but if he but if he doesn't have you in the drop down then no no you're going to pull right. your gun out and, and try to get a shot it's off. cover number one adequate cover number two return fire yeah pretty much so so then larry he he kind of repeats the theme. He says, if you really think a school official with a gun stops this abruptly or saves more lives, you are delusional. Why? Why not? <laughs> well, why why that's the what fuck they, not, Larry? Why don't you call Israel, in? Israel does uh, not have this issue. <laughs> and, Israel does and not have this the, issue with mass, mass school shooters. Do you know why? Well, it's because they have has guns over there. They're right. They have armed, they have armed personnel at the school. The, uh, the gunmen had an overwhelming tactical advantage. Larry... Un unless you're going to show me that this was some sort of uh, highly trained dude that really knew what the heck he was doing. What he had was an AR with uh, multiple magazines. Now he had, you know, he could he could get a lot of rounds off. Uh, he definitely had a tactical round. Actually, I will say, yes, I'll agree with you. Against one handgun, he has an overwhelming tactical advantage. But... If you're going to tell me that a school official with a gun cannot stop stop a man with an AR, well, I mean, again, I'm not going to say that I like his chances. I I like the chances of at least distracting the guy, maybe even wounding him. 
Uh, at, but even if he just distracts him, more people were going to get out of the way. But yes, if it's just one person with a gun against an AR or a handgun against a person with an AR and that person with the AR has the drop on him, yeah. Now, Larry also said that, uh, where, where is it here? Uh, if a gunman has set up outside a school, a person from inside the building with a gun, gunned down when exiting the building. Um, well, that, that would assume that the person who has a gun is going to run out of the school with his gun in the air, showing the guy he has a gun before he tries to engage with him. That would be stupid. Right. Why would you leave I cover? I would do that. <laughs> right. I, Why would you leave cover? Rule number I, one. I, I would cover. I would try to find a place where this guy wasn't looking and take a very careful strategic aim. Now I'm if I'm not saying that I would. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I could totally panic and 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 curl up like a right. little you fetal baby. I don't know. Flail your arms with your weapon above your head. Does right. Be- I could do that. I, could, I, I don't know what I do in that situation. I don't. I really don't know. And I and I know that Larry has some experience that's, that's much more than me. But now I'm not at all suggesting that somehow one person with a gun would save the day. But imagine if if there were three or four or five. How many people went to this school? How many teachers were there? You know, there's a there's a pretty big school, wasn't it? What if it what if it was five or six people with guns? Then, then you're talking about something a lot different. But we, we, we have this anti-gun culture. This We're trying to pass on fear of the gun to people. You should, you should pass on respect. You need to respect that gun. You know, always, always, always be very careful. Be, you know, mind your, you know, all the, the four rules, whatever. Uh, you know, don't point your gun at anything you don't want to destroy and, uh, always treat your gun like it's loaded with one in the chamber. Uh, yeah, you, you, you want to do all that. You want to be highly respectful. Guns are not toys. But you don't need to be afraid of them. But we have this gun fear culture that produced, in part, a school that was completely disarmed. And 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 I don't know, Bodie, the chances, I would say... When you have an AR and you're going into a school, you don't have to get very close to people to begin to have an impact on them, especially if they're in a small group in in this uh, gathering that it appears that maybe they were. I don't I I would say I would put the chances on somebody, even one person with a gun taking that guy out. Uh, as opposed to somebody rushing the guy and tackling him. Rushing the guy and tackling him is not, never not a, a first choice when you have a gun. Unless, like I said, unless he has a drop on you. If he has a drop on you, then you're not going to try to pull your gun out. Because by the time you get your gun out, he's already shot you, you're dead. So, I I hopefully have addressed it. Uh, let's see if we have any... Uh, Distract the kid enough so others can escape. You have clearly never been in a live fire situation. No, I hasn't. Haven't, Larry. I I absolutely haven't. Are you dealing with a professional fighter here, Larry? Are you dealing with some crazy kid? You tell me. Hey, yeah, I don't know if we got zucked, Jacob. I was wondering that. It says this live video has ended, but I've seen that before. And uh, I can tell that it's still going, uh, even though it says this this live video has ended. But I want to let you guys know I am recording it, although I missed the very first part of the show. And maybe that's just as well, because <laughs> the, the first <laughs> part of the show, I was, uh, I told you guys, I, I warned you in the description. I said, I'm a little bit upset. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit, I, I would say that I'm a bit... Just a tiny bit reactionary with this. Maybe, maybe just a tiny bit reactionary. Uh, let's see. Well, we got here. Unless they're trained for such an event. Oh, okay. No, no, never mind. I already, I already saw that comment from Mr. Bodes. You know, Bodie, you're free to call in too, by the way, if you'd like. And you can, you can talk about, uh, uh, about this reality. Uh, the, other, the other point is this. Does the guy show up in the first place if he believes that there are people there 
with guns, that there's a good chance that there's going to be multiple people there with guns. I, I don't know that for sure. I don't know exactly what the situation is or what his mindset is, and we're going to get conflicting reports as the stuff emerges, but I would be willing to bet Niz's lunch tomorrow at the very least <laughs> that that guy wouldn't show up at that school if if he thought that there was that there was uh, oh and Jacob uh, if he thought that there were guns there and Jacob LaBelle is apparently happy to hear me drop an F-bomb I don't generally do that I really <laughs> don't I try not to do that on our shows so but I knew ahead of time that's why I warned everyone <laughs> this this there could be some letter the the the, the sixth letter could come into play strongly <laughs> in this particular <laughs> show so now what you see on the other side is why don't you i mean well you, you were talking about this earlier about what does it tell you about our culture that when something like this happens, all these different political factions are scrambling to make sure it's not their guy. Right. They're, everybody is running to try to connect it to the opposition so that it can be used for political leverage. This is this is the, a, a clear example of of uh, you know never let a good tragedy go to waste. They don't want to squander this opportunity for the reactionary uh, uh, knee jerk response. Uh, from their constituencies, regardless of it, whether you know it's the right or the left, uh, you know. I mean, obviously, we all know, we and 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 we all know, know that Ryan. Yeah, this Ryan happens. said what culture? I know, I know. I'm I'm just using the phraseology, Ryan. I understand. There's really when you're talking about culture in America, I don't know what you're really talking about, but still, yeah. What does it say about the environment <laughs> that? All these, all these folks are rushing off to try to pin it on the other guy because, because like you said, they know full well, and the right's going to do it to the left, and the left's going to do it to the right. They're all going to use it as an excuse to paint the whole group with right. the actions of this well, one and, guy. And you can see that right now. I mean, if uh, I don't know if your uh, your your Facebook feed may not be as di diverse as mine is, uh, but I can see I see it right now scrolling through my Facebook. I see you see all the. The, uh, all the posts from the leftists are all about how uh, he had Muslim slurs uh, on his Instagram page. And all the posts from all the right wingers all say, you know, he was an Antifa member and, and a communist. And, uh, you know, everyone wants to put blame uh, on everyone else. The only place that they're not focusing blame is on the actual guy who actually held the gun and committed this atrocity because he's the only one responsible you know I, I i might use a little hyperbole and say you know the, the 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 blood is on the gun grabber's hands yeah i'm i'm kind of doing a tactic there maybe i shouldn't do it i don't know but uh I, i'm doing a tactic i'm i'm kind of preemptively uh targeting them before they target uh if but before they target the gun folks uh but uh, of course, I know that they don't really have blood on their hands. The only person who has blood on his hands is that dude. He's it. He's the only one responsible. Only individuals act. That's right. It. And if you're looking for a secondary, if you're looking for a secondary blame, it would be all of these goofy people that were at the school, uh, whether it were students and teachers uh, and administration, uh, local law enforcement. You know his uh, his parents. Uh, all of these people that uh, that have all of these quotes, well, we knew that he was going to do something like this. Well, if you knew he was going to do something like this, why did you wait until he did it to bring it to anyone's attention? Why wouldn't you go and say, hey, look, this kid's got a problem. We might want to keep a little bit of a, a closer eye on him than, than we normally would because, like you said, if anyone is going to shoot up the school, it's going to be him. Yeah, when somebody says that, maybe maybe you pay attention. And the guy, he showed off his guns, and he had some signs. Yeah, but but you know, th th there's no there's no guarantees. And 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 I absolutely know. I you know, I I I'm a concealed carrier. I don't I don't have an illusion that because I carry a gun that I'm somehow invincible. I don't, and I don't believe that. If somebody had a gun, that that absolutely would assure that this would not have happened. Well, I, I will say, though, all things being equal, 
if you think about it, if it's your kid, would you rather there be, I mean, don't get me wrong. If it was my kid, I'd rather there were five, six, or seven people with guns there to to be able to do something about this threat. Uh, but if I had a choice of, like, my choice is either no gun or one gun. going to go ahead and, and pick the one gun. Get, <laughs> right. At least give them a chance. And, right. And yeah, I, I, I absolutely, like I said in the beginning, when I got to this point, that is, whenever that was, a handgun facing off against an AR, it's not good. You don't have a good choice. Basically, a good chance. Honestly, if <laughs> all things being equal, What's, if I'm in a situation... Even with that said, Paul, the unfortunate thing is that in this in this uh, in, in a situation like this, we'll never know. We'll never we'll know. Never know because the you only didn't give anybody the option. Is when there's no one there with a firearm, uh, it's fish in a barrel, and 17 people get murdered. Right, or whatever the number currently is, because you know how these things are. The top 18, lines. maybe I don't. I don't know what it is. 17. Change. I don't know. The numbers are all those, over those the numbers board. are going to change, but. One thing right. that's not going to change is the the fact that uh, well I'll call it a fact. It's not objectively speaking. I I won't say that I can prove it a fact, if, but if, I, I will say my the, strong uh, suspicion is that if more if if there were more folks that that had guns and and you you knew before you ever stepped out the door with your AR that you were heading to a place where you can expect. Four, five, or six people might have guns that can fight back. I don't think a, 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 this type of person who's looking to take out as many people as they possibly can, I don't think they show up in this setting. Right. I can be wrong, but I really I don't think they show up at the setting. I think it's much more attractive when they know this is a this is a gun free zone. I can go ahead. And I can take out as many people as I want, and I've got no worries that anybody's going to stop me. I, right, because could, how many mass shooters? How many mass shooters have uh, have uh, attacked a police station? How many mass shooters have uh, you know? What was we had one in 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 the last how many years that uh, Nadal Hassan here in uh, in Texas at Fort Hood, uh, and 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 well, that was a gun free zone. And with that said, <laughs> I was just going to say that was a gun free zone. How many of these guys do you see, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, going into these areas where you have, uh, you know, many, many well-armed individuals? They don't do it. Why don't they do it? Look, I'll, I'm going to give you an example. Okay, this happened here in Texas. Uh, there was a, the Draw Mohammed uh, uh, contest that they had, and and two two uh, Muslim guys, very very offended, they showed up with shotguns, uh, and they decided that they were going to, uh, you know, they were going to punish the infidels for drawing Muhammad. Uh, let me, I'll just give you an opportunity uh, to guess how that turned out for them here in Texas. How do you think that turned out for them in Texas? It didn't turn out well. No. The, the, there was only two people who were shot, and the two people who were shot were the two guys that showed up that were going to kill people for drawing Muhammad. Larry says, what specifically should the authorities have done preemptively? I don't know, Larry. I'm not really, I'm not blaming the authorities here, so I'm not sure what your, what your. I point think is. I think he's addressing. I think his point was to me because I'm saying if you want to place, the first the primary blame is on the actor himself, the guy who actually pulled the trigger. The secondary blame is going to be must absolutely must be assigned to the people who were surrounding this dude that now after the fact come out and say there were all these warning signs. Oh, we knew he was going to do this. We knew he was going to do it. Well, if you knew he was going to do it, why don't you bring it to someone's attention? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really give it. I wouldn't assign secondary blame to them. I would say, honestly, I I I I'd be willing to bet that you know ninety nine times out of a hundred that the people who say the kinds of things he said aren't going to do anything. Uh, doesn't mean that they still shouldn't have uh, notified someone. But Larry, I'm I'm not blaming the authorities at all for what happened here. They they got there as fast as they could. They tried to do whatever they could do to stop the guy. It was a bad situation. Uh, yeah. So not not sure. I, I I did see your little snooty comment here. What do you want the authorities to do exactly? 
whatever they have done, you'd be the first people to label them Nazi Gestapo jackboot thugs for investigating people that have not committed a crime. Larry, this you guy? stupid ninny. Is My problem is when they go after people who have not harmed others or threatened to harm others. This guy is threatening to harm others. I don't have a problem with that. So, false equivocation there, buddy. And if you got a problem with that, call in. I'd love to give you a little bit more of my mind right right here. Larry equals LNC. Okay, I don't know what that means. What's that mean, Ryan? You know what that means, LNC? Is that like the liber libertarian Nazi party thingy? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I don't know what it means. Larry, Ryan, you got to tell me. What the... What does what does LNC mean? I'm I'm dying to find out what it means. I really wish Larry would call it. That would make my freaking day. I have I would love to tell him. See, Larry is a horrible person. Everybody knows that. Everybody who knows me, who interacts with Larry, knows he is a very he's a horrible person. But I love him. I can't see Larry's he's, comments because he's, he's blocked. That's, oh, I can't yeah. see anything. He's blocked. Any comment because he's been he blocked got in now. Blockville. I yeah. understand that. <laughs> There's a lot of my friends that have put Larry on Blockville, but I got a history with Larry, so he's my horrible person. But he's still a horrible I had a horrible person. Per Remember Danny? I had a horrible person. Ah, oh, Libertarian National Committee. I don't know. Is Larry the LNC? Larry, are you a member? Are you a member, or have you ever been? Of uh, are you a member of or have you ever been a member of the Libertarian Party? <laughs> I just want to know because we're gonna find out. We're gonna root you out, Larry. We're gonna figure it out. I the bottom line here is uh, got breaking story, and uh, I'm still a little bit heated. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll try to write something on this. Maybe a little bit more calm and rational and even in my approach right now i don't i don't feel very even and one of the reasons why i'm taking this so personal is that i do have a kid that goes to school and uh, so i could immediately connect to it and my immediate connection my visceral immediate connection was thinking of those kids being defenseless and that that broke my heart and could it could it have been any different i don't know uh who knows, man? Who who know? and the, and the, and the sad part is we may never know. We may we may never know. These things can can continue to happen, and we may never know. Um, you, you know, if if there would be a different outcome, if uh, if someone was wrong. What I can say is what I had said earlier. Uh, in places where they do have uh, armed uh, administration, uh, they don't have these mass shootings at schools because nineteen-year-old kids don't necessarily want to get into a firefight. What they want to do is they want to get in easily and uh, cause as much damage as they can generally without having any damage to themselves. Now, I will say that some turn the gun on themselves afterwards, uh, but they wouldn't even get that opportunity if there were uh, armed uh, armed administration. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and block someone. Mm Time for any of you people. <laughs> Block. Yeah, you guys man. can witness me blocking right here in, in the live. You got the band, man, sucker. Yeah. That's, that's what happens. Uh, but yeah. now, like not like I said, now the blame game is on. Everybody is rushing to try to blame this to somebody else. And it's it's all to try to get political leverage. And that's what the, the the terrible part of this is is that everyone wants to use this for, for political leverage. Uh, well, you know whether it's the right or or the left, everyone wants to uh, to to get their uh, fifteen minutes of fame uh, out of this uh, un, unfortunate tragic event. Yeah, just a little little last note here before I say goodbye. Goodbye, Matt Majewski. Goodbye. And there you go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Got no patience. Got no patience. What? No uh, patience I don't know. whatsoever.
I, I my my so patience with gun grabbers is incredibly low, and anybody that I think even sniffs at possibly supporting them or being an apologist for them, yeah, I got, I ain't got time for that. You you go bye byes, and there you go. Yeah, Ryan, you're you're absolutely right, man. Um, academia does tell millennials that we have to address. Uh, that we have to address this issue, and and uh, that's we that's that that kind of goes into some things that we've talked about on on other shows, whether it's uh, you know here on Is Daily or or it's on some of the, any of the other shows that Paul and I have done together, uh, or any of the shows that we've done individually. I know at least on my end, uh, I, I I do uh, I, I do tend to to bring up this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, this cultural Marxism, or as, you know Jordan Peterson calls it uh, postmodernism. Uh, I do bring this up. I mean, this these are these are the kind of things that are uh, that are drilled into these young kids' head about you know the the gun control debate and about you know socialism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on, uh, and and you end up having a, a you know a, a group of young adults that instead of being taught uh, to respect firearms, they're taught to fear firearms, and uh, the the a gun turns into a uh, a tool of fear instead of a tool of self defense and protection uh and and even in culture i mean look at look at look at how uh, you know modern culture whether it's uh, you know movies or music glorifies uh glorifies this uh, thuggery and violence behind a gun i mean that's uh that, that's part of the problem also i mean that's uh that has to be uh, uh that has to be addressed yeah well, I don't really. I, I don't. I don't mean addressed by the government. I mean addressed by you know society in general. I don't know if it needs to be addressed so much as the people who actually say that they believe that, uh, especially the pro-gun people. Now, I understand the folks that you know they're not for gun control, but they're not necessarily pro-gun. I understand them, but the people who are pro-gun and you know, maybe maybe you should really be thinking about, like, what what New York New York State they're they they were saying about, okay, so there's a certain amount of people that had not complied, what was it there, uh, the 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 New York State numbers they were they were kind of saying see this man see they're ignoring it, New York uh, felons oh, the safe laws, uh, yeah talking- yeah the safe laws. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, So massive noncompliance. Okay, that's old news. That's from 2016. Uh, Oh, I can't find it. But anyway, there's a significant number of people that didn't comply, that haven't turned in the guns they're supposed to turn into. But there's a huge amount of people that have, and therein lies your problem. And so what happens when... When, when the politicians are getting together and they're going to pass another gun law, you know, why, why don't you just tell them, fuck you? Why don't you say, go ahead and pass your damn law. I'm going, not only am I going to ignore it, but me and my buddies, don't, don't tell them who your buddies are, but, you know, we're, we're, we're going to make sure, you know, use self 411 and use self 411 to keep in contact with one another. And the minute a cop shows up, to try to arrest one of these folks, everybody shows up, and I'm not talking about your your you know yeah 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 you show up with your guns just open carry, but you're not you're not showing up to go shooting cops. I, I'm not talking about that. You don't need to do that. Trust me. All that's going to happen is you're going to show up and they're going to see they got oh well the people don't like this. I'm not dealing with this and they're going to go away, and that just keeps happening over and over and over again, and then they quietly. Or, you know, rescind the gun laws, and they don't do it because they want to give you freedom. They want they do it because they don't want to expose that they got no real power. I mean, it's it's largely how the the uh, the alcohol prohibition <laughs> ended. the 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 states weren't complying; they couldn't get anybody to go out and arrest anybody, and it was becoming more and more apparent. So they're like, "Dude, let's just quickly repeal this because we look like totally powerless." Yinyas. And yeah, see that that's far more effective because even if you do that and and you don't keep up that type of resiliency and they're and they believe 
that maybe you're not going to be as as resistant, guess what? <laughs> They're going to come back the next week or the next year or the next five years or the next. They're never, ever going away. They're never, ever going away. The people who want to chip away at your ability to possess a self-defense tool are never, ever going away. And the only way that they won't come after you is if they know they don't have the power to come after you. And you think that you're going to change things with laws. You're delusional. You may change things for a month or two months, a year, whatever, but they're coming right back. So those, you're, you're never going to be able to write in legislation something in stone that remains unchanged. The only assurance that you have is if the powers that be understand that enforcing something isn't going to happen. That's it. I don't, I don't know what more I, I want to say about this, but maybe tomorrow I'll have a, of a, a, a calmer thought about everything, but I certainly don't feel very confident or very very calm and very rational at this present moment in time no and you can you can be get you can be guaranteed that over the next the course of the next three days um uh, will be dominated the news cycle this will dominate the news cycle oh, absolutely the they're going to hit it day in and day out but i gotta uh, say that the, the, it makes me wonder what what's going on in congress right now i gotta say if you're watching this and you see my animation. My immediate gut reaction when I first saw this was absolutely. And I'm not saying it's rational. I'm not saying that I had a, a clear, lucid thought that was developed through logic and reason. I'm talking about my visceral reaction. My visceral reaction when I heard immediately how these kids were diving under their desks and other kids were diving in the closets and people were begging for their lives. And I pictured these folks being defenseless. And my daughter was in that room. This is why I am reacting the way I am reacting. Because my daughter was in that room. My daughter was defenseless. And there was nobody around to, to at least attempt to protect her. No one. No one with any kind of effective tool. Anywhere near effective tool to protect her. This is what went through my head. And this is why I had the visceral reaction that I've had. Maybe I'll delete half of my Facebook post I've made today. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe eventually I'll unblock Matt. I don't know. Who knows? But today, that's what I feel. Today, it was personal for me. Not nearly. I don't want to overblow this. It was not nearly as personal for me as, as the, the families that right now are going through what they're going through. The ones that have to show up. And identify the bodies. I'm not them. I'm not nowhere near close to dealing with what they're dealing with. But it's still a statistical anomaly. And I understand that. But I can connect to it. <laughs> And if you can connect to something, it seems way, way bigger than it is. I don't, and and don't, don't get me wrong, the killing of 17 kids, kids in one place is horrible and tragic. I, I do want to remind you, though, that over, over in Syria, thanks to U.S. bombs, thanks to Israeli bombs, thanks to Turkish bombs, Thanks to Russian bombs, thanks to Syrian bombs, thanks to ISIS bombs. There have been plenty of times when it's been more than 17 kids killed at one shot. 
You want to talk about gun control? Why don't you talk about government gun control, government weapon control? Because they've clearly demonstrated total irresponsibility when it comes to the use of weapons. They're killing people on a massive scale. This, this, as horrible as this event is, it's dwarfed in comparison to what goes on all around the world thanks to government weapons. So if you want to talk about disarmament, you better be talking about the government as well as the non-government. And if you're talking about the government and the non-government, all right, let's get together. But if you're just talking about one side being disarmed, get the fuck out of here. I got nothing for you. I look at you as nothing more than somebody who, who in the deep recesses of your twisted fucking mind, you imagine someday there will be a wonderful police state and you'll be on the, the, the beneficiary end of that police state. And you're working your way up the police informant ladder to be able to get the extra stakes that month. That's how I look at you. That's what I think of you. Unless, of course, you're talking about disarming both sides. Other than that, now I got nothing for you. If you go to iState.tv and you read the way that I cover these gun stories, I'm calling out people by name. I'm calling out the reporters that are doing the progressive state media work of carrying the gun fear. The big, they're working on a big narrative now. They're working on the ghost guns. I call them liberty guns. I'm not calling them ghost guns. They're working on them ghost guns. They want to, you know, the, the terrorists will get them. The, the criminals will get them and they'll get away with murder. You yeah, don't want another 9-11. You don't want another 9-11, yeah. Yeah, they're working on all that, man. And, and I'm calling people out by name, specifically. Today, I called out the owners of the Cox Media Group, specifically a guy named, what, what was his name? Something, James Kennedy. James Kennedy, he owns Cox Communications, which owns the subdivision Cox Media Group, which owns Fox 25 News, which decided to do an investigative report about ghost guns in which they're spreading that fearfulness. It was so easy for us to be able to go out and make a gun and it was untraceable and it was scary and ooh, we're all going to die. Yeah, I'm calling you out by name as much as I can. Unfortunately, this report it wasn't attributed to one person. So so I'm calling out the owner, Cox, Cox Communications, by name. They, these folks, they rely on hiding behind nameless, faceless institutions. The Congress did it. The Senate did it. Cox Communications did it. No, individuals did it. And those individuals need to be called out by name. And, and all I'm talking about is, all I'm saying is ostracize them. Don't hang out with them. Don't invite them to your birthday parties. If, if you go to church with them, go to another church or, or try to get them out of your, I don't know, it's go to different. another church, whatever. Just, just stay the heck away from them. They are a toxicity. They're a virus. They're, they're, they're deadly. That's the way that they should be viewed. And may, who knows, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, six months from now, a year from now, I'll look back and say, oh, Paul, you were totally wrong about that. I don't feel wrong right now. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know. I'm, I'm open to talking about it. Although, if you try to talk about, uh, about it to any detail today, yeah, I might not be so open. But, but in time. You might get the van hammer. Yeah. yeah, you might get the van hammer today. But in time, catch me at a time when I'm not feeling so visceral as, as I am right now. And I, 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 think we're, I think we're at the end of this, this fine show. And I thought that we would end up just talking about this topic, and it's kind of what ended up happening. It's the way it went. <laughs> Had a number of stories planned. Maybe we should have just covered them anyway. Maybe we should have just ignored the story. I don't. I, know. I, I, don't I don't think. I think we did the right. I think we did the right thing uh, by by talking about this. I mean, it's definitely something that uh, it needs it needs to be addressed, and it needs to be uh, it it needs to be addressed from another viewpoint other than. 
uh, other than you know the gun grabber, uh, you know, uh, gun control viewpoint. Uh, and then it also needs to be addressed other from a different angle, other than the blame game, because you're going to see this over the next three days. I'm telling you, mark my words, man. You are definitely unequivocally 100% going to see this over the next three days. Uh, you're going to see the blame game pan, play, uh, pan out where, uh, you know, you got uh, you click on Fox News and they're going to be saying, uh, you know, he was a, a leftist uh, Antifa member and you're going to be inundated on social media with all your conservative friends posting all this stuff from, uh, you know, he was a uh, uh, Antifa. He was a communist and you're going to. Be inundated on the other side uh, from, you know, MSNBC and CNN and, and all those other uh, leftist outlets, um, you know, that he was, uh, you know, oh, he has had, had anti-Muslim stuff on his uh, Instagram. And uh, you're going to this is, will be parroted by their regurgitators on social media. I will say one last thing about this. It is true, even if there, well, certainly if there was just one person there with a handgun, your chances of stopping this guy were still pretty small. Uh, I mean, honestly, if, if I'm in a situation in which I'm facing somebody with an AR, unless I have like a personal stake, in this case, since these are high school kids, I would probably feel compelled to risk my life. But in other situations, I might very well, actually in almost any situation, which I have a handgun facing an AR, my response is to run, to get out of there. I'm not even messing with an AR if I have a handgun. Let's just, just make that clear. I don't have a delusion about the, the fantastic, uh, magical power of guns. But the one thing I want to say, uh, I mean, the last thoughts here is, it's not gun control. It's 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 there's something else going on, and it has nothing to do with guns. And and yeah, I think you could make some degree of an argument that a guy like this, if he if he doesn't have a gun, maybe it's harder for him to kill as many people. But there are ways that he could have. He could have used fertilizer and created a bomb. Whatever. He could have done stuff. He could have. He could have done something to have a mass casualty event uh but there's something else going on that that's it's and and i i don't have my finger on it but the the problem is that there exists a fair amount of people within maybe not just america i don't know where else these these issues are happening but that are completely for one reason or another, disenfranchised. And no, this is not a, a society's to blame. No, 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 they're, they're to blame. I'm just saying that, that it's a reflection of, of ills in the land. There's something broken. And I think mostly the thing that's broken is how we are we are we are raising people that we have been for generations. We're raising them to be cogs. And and nothing more, you know, we, you know, we're following the depression model in school. We're quickly identifying the vast majority of people that we identify as cogs and they get a certain type of education and then certain groups of people that they identify as managers. And and if you come from the upper classes, then you're identified as one of the owners and you get a certain level of education. I see my my daughter. She she chooses to go to public school. I don't choose to put her there. I. I do peaceful parenting, so I'm not making her do unschooling, but she knows it's there. The offer's there. I wish she would take it, but she's gifted. And so her education, she's actually getting more critical thinking stuff, but she sees the homework and sees the stuff that most of the other kids are getting, and it's complete sheeple cog producing crap. So... <laughs> So I don't think it's any wonder that we're producing more and more people that are totally disenfranchised, that hate the world, that hate everyone around them, and 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 they want to take out as many of them as they possibly can. And that's not going to change if you take away the guns. As a matter of fact, it's going to get worse because if you take away the guns, that, that foot on your neck from the state is going to get a lot tougher, a lot heavier a lot tighter.
That's it. I think we're done. Do you have any last remarks? I I, I, I don't really, man. I'm 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 going to wait, and I'm going to wait until all the information comes out about motives and you know the the actual investigation is completed before I go anywhere because I don't want to go into the knee jerk reaction uh, territory too much. You know what I mean? I've learned my lessons in the past uh, that when you're, you know, when you're when you're watching these things as they're unfolding, almost no one gets it right on the first couple days. No, you know, yeah, that's why this show we're mostly we're talking about like core principles that are no matter what, whatever details come out about the shooting, these core principles are still being applied. They're going to change, right? They're not going to change who, who this guy is, what his motivations were. Listen, I can assure you, if it turns out that he turns out to be a member of Antifa, I'm not saying he is, but if he does, I'm not going to broad stroke and designate all of Antifa as this guy, nor I'm will I do talk. it if he turns out to be a Muslim or a Christian or a conservative. Yeah, I'm not I'm going gonna... to paint the groups broadly with who right. this guy is. I want to tell you right now that if it turns out that he is a leftist or a member of Antifa, I'm going to tell you right now you're probably not going to hear it from the leftist news media. Probably. And when not. I say leftist news media, I mean the mainstream media because there really isn't. I mean, you you know, you may watch, you may be. I don't know where we're where we're broadcasting the show today. Normally we do it on the Liberty Principle, but we may be doing it That's other places. Today. Today. If you're principle. conservative, if you're a conservative or you're a Republican and you're watching oh, this. You know? Yeah, we're on a number of other pages too. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I don't, I don't know how you feel about Fox News, but make no mistake, uh, Fox News is by far not a right wing media source. All of the mainstream media is a left wing media. So all of it, all of it. If you're watching Fox, MSNBC, CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC. Uh, you name it, it's it. There, they are left wing. There is no such thing as a right wing media source in America, unless you're going to uh, alternative or maybe, possibly, I guess maybe some of the uh, radio, the mainstream radio hosts, maybe, perhaps, but I wouldn't, uh, you know, pin that one down just yet because uh, I don't think there is any anything. So, bottom line. You're going to see a lot of stuff changing and flipping and flopping over the next couple of days. People trying to put blame on on this guy, but I would almost guarantee that even if he himself stood up, you know, and uh, and 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 held up a, a you know a copy of the Communist Manifesto, Communist, yeah, you're not going to see that on any news outlet whatsoever. This guy will be painted almost uh, certainly will be painted as a right winger, almost certainly. Yeah, and I'll say uh, on the news front, if you're getting your news from one source or just a couple sources, you, you're doing it wrong. Almost every news outlet, whether the left or the right, is biased, and very few news outlets are are making any attempt to actually show. I mean, like I state, um, you know, it's an opinion site. Definitely, I'm I'm not the place to go to for your straight news unless. If you're looking for tech stuff, yeah, that's that's more straight newsy kind of stuff, definitely. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not your place to go for straight news. I'm more opinion. But you know, when I get my news, I get my news from CNN. I get my news from Fox. I get my news from Anti-War. I get my news from the Daily Sheeple. I get my news from Fox 25. I get my news from a whole ton of sources. And from those whole ton of sources, I can somewhat, not completely, but somewhat uh, s sift through uh, the opinion and the bias and to some degree figure out what, what's really going on, at least as far as the things that I'm interested in following. And, and I would highly recommend, you know, build, build an RSS feed, an aggregate, of a bunch of sites and really pick pick from some diverse sources. Don't just pick the sites okay. that you like. That, and that, and I, if I could give you a tip, I'll give you my, this is my tip, okay? My tip is this. If I see something on a news outlet and I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting. 
So the first thing I'll do is I'll try to cross-reference it with somewhere yeah. else, just sure that it's uh, you know it's on the up and up, it's legit. Other people are reporting on this, and then the next thing I do is I go to YouTube and I start looking for not for YouTube videos of goofy guys wearing tinfoil hats, you know, or saying this is a false flag. Yeah, They're I'm not going to those children. Guys. Uh, no, not those guys. That's not what I'm looking for on YouTube. What I'm looking for on YouTube is I'm looking for that person that's concerned in that story, and I'm looking for their own words. So when I hear something, you know, let's say MSNBC puts something out and they, they're, you know, they're ragging on somebody because, oh, they're a terrible Nazi racist and they're in their usual hysteria about, uh, you know, about uh, Nazi racists and, uh, and, and he's a bigot and an Islamophobe and a homophobe and a xenophobe and a jingoist and all this. I want to hear that guy's actual words. So I want to go and I want to find out what they're talking about and see if I can get that person's actual words. If I can hear it come from their mouth, that's when I'll believe it. My, my grandfather used to tell me something when I was a kid. And he used to tell me, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. And that's how, that's how I play my news. I only believe uh, half of what I see and none, none of what I hear. I don't even believe half. Anyway, <laughs> I'm anyway, giving him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you're really, really giving a, <laughs> a lot of credit out. Okay, so uh, in summary, my reason for doing this show is really simple. I absolutely had an emotional, visceral reaction to this uh, because I tied it directly to my daughter, which may have been irrational, certainly, but there, there you have it. Um, but the most important part of the story, of course, is that there are at least 17 kids that are dead. And 17 families and 17 networks of friends connected to these kids that now have to deal with the fact that someone they love was just killed. And that it's easy to lose focus on that point. So my prayers are to the families and the friends of these 17 kids. And Lord, hope, hopefully, Lord willing, that's, that's all it'll be. That's, that's, that's the most disturbing part of this whole thing. And on that note, I think we'll end the show. I'm not going to give any promos today. I'm just going to end it there. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. Good night, everybody.